This is a Net News Network headline news brought to you by the Behind the Line podcast, bringing you all the crazy, chaotic news from around the United States and the world. Tune in to what you won't hear the MSN talking about. Well, here's a good reason not to buy smart appliances for your home. And also, you know, if you recall that story a few years ago about the FCC chief who was so excited about all the possibilities that 5G would bring as far as putting chips in everything we have in our homes, you know, uh, ovens, refrigerators, toilets, everything, every single thing. Why would that be? Why would that be such a great thing? Do you really need to get on your phone to see what's in your refrigerator while you're at the grocery store? I mean, honestly, do you really need that? Would you like your city uh, power company to be able to shut your refrigerator off whenever they felt like it? Or maybe the smart thermostat in your house. Would you like them to be able to shut that off whenever they deemed it uh, as an emergency or it's too much uh, draw on the electrical system, so we're going to shut it off or set the temperature to what we think you should have it at, what we think you should be comfortable at. Or maybe your water company could charge you tax every time you flush your toilet because of those little chips in your toilet. Does that sound far-fetched to you? Because it's not. Thousands of utility customers in Colorado were locked out of changing their thermostats due to an energy emergency, sparking outrage that spilled onto social media. Excel Energy, a utility company based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, confirmed that 22,000 customers in Denver, Colorado area who were signed up for the Colorado AC Rewards Program were locked out of their thermostats for several hours on Tuesday. Tony Tarlico of Excel Energy customer in Arvada, Colorado, told KMGH-TV that he attempted to turn up the air conditioning as temperature creeped into the 90s on Tuesday, but was greeted with a message from his thermostat declaring an energy emergency and prevented from turning the dial. Normally, when we see messages like that, we're able to override it, Tallarico said. In this case, we weren't, so our thermostat was locked in at 78 or 79. Some customers posted on social media that they were stuck with home temperatures as high as 88 degrees. In a statement, Excel Energy pointed out that customers were part of a rewards program that gave them a discount on their energy bill in exchange for permission to give the company some control over their smart thermostats. You know, that's in that little contract you sign when you sign up for stuff like this and all those little tiny words that you don't bother to read, and they know it. It's a voluntary program, Emmett Romine, Vice President of Customer Solutions and Innovation at Excel, told the TV station. Let's remember that this is something that customers chose to be a part of based on their incentives. Customers receive $100 credit when they sign up for the program and $25 annually. $25 a year. Good job. So it helps everybody for people to participate in these programs. Really? 25 bucks a year? What what does that help? How does that help you? It is a bit uncomfortable for a short period of time, but it's very, very helpful, Romine said, adding that this week was the first time in six years that customers could not override their thermostats. California was going through the same thing, sort of thing, last week, still this week where they were asking customers not to charge their electric vehicles. This in the first state to ban the sale of gas-powered vehicles starting in 2030. The electric grid isn't set up for all this extra load, especially when it's this hot. So they're going to force you into electric cars, and you won't be able to charge them, so you won't be able to go to work, so you won't be able to go to the grocery store. They can shut you off whenever they want with all their little smart meters. Folks, did you really not see this coming? Did you really not see the writing on the wall? I mean, California, like I said, is at a risk for rolling blackouts right now because of the heat wave. 
As a result, diesel demand in California is soaring as the risk of blackouts in the state spurs big power users to load up on fuel for generators. Hospitals, data centers, and other major energy consumers are buying up increasingly sparse diesel supplies to prepare for possible power outages, according to local fuel distributors. That's likely to push prices for fuel even higher in the state, even as the national average continues to fall. California diesel inventory is already at the lowest level since November 2019, while West Coast supplies are at the lowest seasonal level in a decade. California also banned the use of gas and diesel power generators, lawn equipment, and that sort of thing. Hmm. Why is that? Even the U.S. military is getting in on this temperature lock thing in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. Island Palm communities, in conjunction with the U.S. Army garrison, enforced a new thermostat management initiative to combat rising electricity costs in Hawaii. They said community members experienced a 40% increase in electricity rates in the past year. The temperature locks at 72 degrees for all residents on Schofield Barracks. An anonymous resident told the local TV station she is physically getting sick from how hot it is in her home. She said 72 degrees is dangerous for her health conditions, her children, and pets. She said her neighbor's infants are running fevers. We're stuck in these homes that reach 80 plus degrees. My home gets to 85 upstairs. Island Palm Community Housing is not listening to us and our concerns, and we don't know what else to do. The TV station contacted IPC. And when they respond to the complaint, they tell them to keep their ceiling fans on, buy portable air conditioners and box fans out of their own pockets. They're stating that if it's reading 72 degrees, there's nothing they can do, but that's strictly in the lower part of the home. They don't read upstairs where it's a lot warmer, and most of the time that's where the children and infants sleep. Island Palm Communities released in a statement that said this decision aligns with the U.S. Department of Energy and Hawaii's electric recommendation for home thermostats. They're going to tell you what's good for you, and you're going to like it. Company officials said limiting the AC temperature to 72 degrees makes a difference in reducing energy consumption. Does it? Because if they're telling you to go buy a window air conditioner, how much electricity is that going to use? Houston, Texas, during this uh, supposed energy shortage and heat wave that they're experiencing, residents stated that he cranked down his air, air conditioning at 2.30 in the afternoon because it takes a long time for his house to get cool when it gets that hot. His wife and daughters decided to take their afternoon nap. They'd been asleep long enough that the house had already gotten to 78 degrees, so they woke up sweating. Without anyone touching their thermostat, they said the thermostat was changed while they were sleeping, making their home unbearably hot. Was my daughter at the point of overheating? The man said. She's three months old. They dehydrate very quickly. His wife received an alert on her phone soon after that. The family said their thermostat had been changed remotely, raising the temperature of their home during a three-hour energy-saving event in the middle of the hottest part of the day. The family's smart thermostat was installed a few years ago as part of a new home security package. Many smart thermostats can be enrolled in a program called Smart Savers Texas. It's operated by a company called Energy Hub. The agreement states that in exchange for an entry into sweepstakes, electric customers allow them to control their thermostats during periods of high energy demand. Energy Hub's list of its clients include TXU Energy, Centerpoint, and ERCOT. When you're signing up for sweepstakes or $25 a year, make sure you read the fine print. But like I said, folks, the government is going to tell you how what you should set your temperature at in your home. And if you won't set it there, they'll set it for you. And you'll learn to like it and be happy. According to Consumer Reports, the Department of Energy and Energy Star recommend the following temperatures for households throughout the day. 78 degrees when you're home, 85 degrees when you're out of the house, and 82 degrees while you're sleeping. 82 degrees. This is what the government is telling you is acceptable for you. Other advice from your government? Use fans. Open your windows. Don't use the washer and dryer or dishwasher during the day. 
Of course, the oven is a main source for heating up the house, so they suggest cooking outside on the grill. Aren't all these modern conveniences wonderful? All this great stuff we have available to us and we can't even keep our homes cool or warm. In other good news, you may have heard that Taiwan shot down a Chinese drone. I believe that was last week. And then shortly after that, the U.S. State Department approved a potential $1.1 billion sale of military equipment to Taiwan, including 60 anti-ship missiles and 100 air-to-air -air missiles, with China threatening to take countermeasures. The Pentagon announced the package on Friday in the wake of Chinese aggressive military drills around Taiwan following a visit to the island last month by U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the highest-ranking U.S. official to travel to Taipei in years. A spokesperson for the Chinese embassy in Washington said in a statement the possible arms sale severely jeopardizes China-U.S. relations and peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. China will resolutely take legitimate and necessary countermeasures in light of the development of the situation. President Joe Biden's administration said the package has been under consideration for some time and was developed in consultation with Taiwan and U.S. lawmakers. I'm sure of it. It's only a matter of time before China invades Taiwan, and they've said as much. That's going to happen. Why all these U.S. representatives are traveling there all of a sudden, and now we're cranking it up by selling arms to Taiwan, when you know when this invasion happens, we're going to do nothing. Maybe put some sanctions on China, but they've already planned for that because they had a meeting with a bunch of big banks about a month ago to find out how they could usurp any American sanctions. Why would they do that? Unless they were planning on having to do it. You've seen the way Biden handled Afghanistan. You've seen the way he handled Ukraine. And we have an agreement with Ukraine as well that we signed, I believe Clinton signed, or maybe it was Bush, that we would protect them in case of a invasion. That didn't happen. We're giving them lots of money, though, and weapons and other equipment. The U.S. is going to stand by while Taiwan gets invaded, and they'll do the same thing. You know, money, weapons, sanctions, but nothing else. That's my guess. And Russia's made it clear that they're going to starve Europe out of gas in a bid to get sanctions lifted. Remember when the Nord Stream pipeline suddenly had a leak? And they couldn't continue pumping? Well, I bet she couldn't figure out that that wasn't necessarily true. Russia said Tuesday it would not resume natural gas flow to the European Union until sanctions are lifted, all but acknowledging that it is intentionally inflicting an energy crisis on Europe as a means of countering Western economic punishment for its invasion of Ukraine. Kremlin spokesperson... Dmitry Pesov told reporters Tuesday that the problems pumping gas through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline came about because of the sanctions Western countries introduced against our country and several companies. Um, why nobody saw this one coming, I don't know. You've got a country at war. These European countries are against this war. They put sanctions against said country causing war and expect said country to continue pumping gas to them? What? What idiot thought that that would ha wouldn't happen? Whether they wouldn't just cut it off? Why wouldn't they? The Russian state-owned energy giant Gazprom announced it has indefinitely cut gas deliveries via Nord Stream 1, citing equipment issues at one of its compressor stations. That announcement came hours after the G7 said Friday it would implement a planned price cap on Russian oil exports beginning December 5th. Nobody cares about your price cap, especially Russia. So price cap it all you want, but you're going to be freezing your butts off this winter. I love reading this confusion in the media about this. Peskov's remarks are the latest in a long line of confusing and at times contradictory statements from Russian officials seeking to redirect blame for the gas cutoff. Hey, idiots. They want the sanctions lifted 
they're not going to keep giving you gas as long as you're economically punishing them. So it's not that hard to figure out. This is a tactic to get sanctions lifted. It's not confusing at all if you have any common sense whatsoever. And as if there isn't enough already going on with all these other weird and fun problems we get to deal with, Scientists have created a synthetic mouse embryo from cells without a dad's sperm or a mom's egg or womb. The lab-created embryos mirror a natural mouse embryo up to eight and a half days after fertilization, containing the same structures, including one like a beating heart. Little scary. In the near term, researchers hope to use these so-called embryos to better understand early stages of development and study mechanisms behind disease without the need for as many lab animals. The feet could also lay the foundation for creating synthetic human embryos for research in the future. For To what end? For why? What is the purpose of this, really? You don't have to kill an animal to get its sperm or eggs, so there's no reason to do this. No logical reason. We are undoubtedly facing a new technological revolution, still very inefficient, but with enormous potential. What, what potential? This is from a research professor at the National Biotechnology Center in Spain who is not part of the research. It is reminiscent of such spectacular scientific advances as the birth of Dolly the sheep and others. Cernica Goats. An expert in stem cell biology said one reason to study the early stages of development is to get more insight into why the majority of human pregnancies are lost at an early stage. And embryos created for in vitro fertilization fail to implant and develop in up to 70% of cases. Studying natural development is difficult for many reasons, she said, including the fact that very few human embryos are donated for research and scientists face ethical constraints. Well. This isn't natural development, for one thing. It's completely unnatural. And I would say there should be some ethical constraints with doing this as well. To create the synthetic embryos or embryoids described in the Nature paper, scientists combined embryonic stem cells and two other types of stem cells, all from mice. They did this in the lab using a particular type of dish that allowed the three types of cells to come together. While the embryoids they created weren't all perfect, Zernica Goats said the best ones were indistinguishable from natural mouse embryos. Besides the heart-like structure, they also develop head-like structures. Researchers said they don't see creating human versions of these synthetic embryos soon, but do see it happening in time. Hannah called it the next obvious thing. Other scientists have already used human stem cells to create a blastoid, a structure mimicking a pre-embryo that can serve as a research alternative to a real one. Such work is subject to ethical concerns. For decades, a 14-day rule on growing human embryos in the lab has guided researchers. Last year, the International Society for Stem Cell Research recommended relaxing the rule under limited circumstances. Again, to what end? What is the purpose of this? We don't need to be growing humans in a lab. That is completely unethical. At the end of this, scientists stress that growing a baby from a synthetic human embryo is neither possible nor under consideration. What? Didn't I just read that this is the next obvious thing? With all these biological experimentations floating around making us sick, why are we messing around with creating life? And in case you were wondering what the timeline is for this economic crash to wrap up, we might have some idea. Fed Now is set to launch by July 2023. The Federal Reserve is on track to deliver an instant payment service called Fed Now between May and July of 2023. The central bank's clearest timeline yet for a new system enabling settlement of U.S. payments in seconds. Fed Now services also potentially neg negates the need for the creation of a central bank digital currency. Isn't that what this will be? 
the FedNow service will transform the way everyday payments are made throughout the economy, bringing substantial gains to households and businesses through the ability to send instant payments at any time on any day, and the funds being immediately available to recipients to make other payments or manage cash flow efficiently. Well, we do that right now for the most part. Of course, they're trying to say that, you know, when your paycheck gets deposited, you don't have to wait two days or five days, that it just instantly goes in. And they can instantly tax you, and they can instantly see what you spend all your money on, and they can shut you off whenever they feel like it. Just like the electricity fed now, which will enable consumers and businesses to send payments instantly, could offer some of the same benefits as a central bank digital currency. Wait a minute. I thought that was to replace that, so that wasn't necessary. Oh, yeah. That's the point. The Fed maintains making funds immediately available will help Americans living paycheck to paycheck or small businesses with cash flow constraints by avoiding late payment fees or freeing up working capital for small businesses to finance growth. Somehow, magically, people aren't going to spend more than they get. It doesn't matter. It's not going to matter. You're still going to have late fees. Instead of before your paycheck, it's going to be, it's still going to be before your next paycheck comes. I mean, this, that argument makes no sense. They also say it could cut demand for payday loans as consumers won't have to wait for a check to clear. Again, it's you're still going to have people spending more than they get. It's just going to be a matter of when those late fees come, before or after, before or after. It's an excuse. I mean, we all know this is coming because they're going to have to wipe out the whole financial system. It's beyond repair cannot be paid off the trillions of dollars in debt that we're running right now they're going to have to just wipe it out and start over and this very likely could be the thing that we'll be starting over with the fed now system would help the government transmit emergency relief payments to americans faster avoiding making citizens wait for checks as during the pandemic well, a lot of people got direct deposits, and they still had to wait for those, and somehow I doubt the government's going to be any faster, regardless of the mechanism. This is just going to be another system of control, and that's it. They'll be able to monitor everything you do, everything you spend your money on. They can shut your cash flow off at any time if they decide to, if you've done something that upsets them. And of course, they'll be able to take their taxes directly instead of waiting for you to write a check. And good old Dr. Fauci back in the news. Aren't you glad? This guy can't retire fast enough, can he? Or some other idiot will take his place. Fauci is claiming that there was not enough time to wait for clinical trial data before clearing updated COVID-19 booster shots. We don't have time to do a clinical trial because we need to get the vaccine out now, Fauci said on CBC this week pointing to how about 400 Americans are dying per day with COVID-19 and thousands of others are in hospitals with the disease. 400 people out of the hundreds of millions that live in this country. But we got to get this thing out. No doubt those 400 people were have underlying medical conditions or health problems, like most of the people who died from this. The updated boosters made by Pfizer and Moderna were authorized by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on August 31st and subsequently recommended for virtually all Americans 12 and older by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Both shots contain elements of the Wuhan BA4 and BA5 virus variants. No human data was or is available for the formulations. Pfizer and Moderna presented data on preclinical testing done on mice. They also referenced human data for a different formulation, combinations of the Wuhan and BA1 strains. Since BA5 is the dominant variant in the United States, you have every reason to believe that the updated formulation is going to be better than having a vaccine that isn't highly specific to the circulating strain. Ah, it's close enough, Fauci said, basically. That hasn't been proven in a clinical trial, he acknowledged. Oh, oh, oh well. Every other vaccine in creation was tested for about 10 years before it was put out on the public. Now they're pumping them out without, at least they tested the original COVID vaccines for a few months. You know, these now, the boosters, ah, just pump them out. Whatever, we'll see what happens when it happens. 
which is kind of what they said with the first round, too. We won't know till we see how many drop dead. They stated that waiting for human data would leave the boosters outdated. If we wait for those data to emerge in human data, not just mice data, we will be using what I would consider to be potentially outdated vaccine. Dr. Harvey Risch, a professor emeritus of epidemiology at the Yale School of Public Health, said that Fauci's comments were hypocritical because randomized controlled trials, RCTs, were required for the original vaccines when the mortality of the virus was much higher. That is, he demanded RCTs when viral mortality was high, i.e. big emergency need, but didn't require RCTs when there was little emergency need, Risch told Epoch Times in an email. He also criticized the government's remarks, pointing to how the CDC's variant monitoring shows that the BA 4.6, which is not part of the updated boosters, is growing in proportion in recent weeks. By the time that a supposed new winter wave of infections would occur in late November or December, it will likely be the BA 4.6, and the new booster will be outdated anyway, Rich said. These vaccines do not stop you from getting COVID, and they do not stop the spread of COVID. And whether or not they limit or reduce the symptoms of COVID is questionable. There are a lot of people dying after getting vaccines and boosters and then developing medical conditions they never had a history of. And I know somebody personally that that happened to. Living a healthy lifestyle and natural immunity, in my opinion, is your best bet against stuff like this. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being these politicians' little lab rat for all these little experiments, biological and social, that they are putting us all through the last couple years. Thank you for listening to Net News Network Headline News brought to you by the Behind the Line podcast. For more, you can listen to us at the Behind the Line podcast.com or right here on Net News Network. We can also be found on Facebook, YouTube, Truth Social, Parlor, Gab, Twitter, Telegram, Reddit, Spotify iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, and anywhere else your favorite podcasts are found. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe and share.